you know, there are a lot of people who say, you know, feed is just about the girl child. We miss a how with a boy child. What do you tell them? We are still working with the boy child. We partner with a lot of organizations who work with boys, but here is a challenge. And I just learned today from my good friend Nick that FIDA, which is the Federation of Women Lawyers in Kenya, is actually a Spanish word. We have Federacion. Maliza, nili kwambia. Maliza, I want to see if you are paying attention. Federacion was enough. The rest. <laughs> the executive director, Anne Ireri, can tell us she's in-house. By the way, she's been with FIDA for 15 years plus. Wow, that's so, a loyalty on another level. You know what I'm saying? And now she's the ED. Anne, welcome to Hot 96. Thank you so much, Jeff and Nick, and thank you for having me. Thank you for your time. I, you know, it's it's incredible. We, we think of FIDA and we think, oh, it's those feminists. Yeah. They are my mama on a bail. They are my mama on a makasiripo. <laughs> but that's not the case. It's not the case. We are practitioners of law who have a passion for family law and seeing society is happy. So that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with being a feminist, but I think uh, what people need to see is at the end of the day, we are professionals and we love what we do out of being passionate. Uh, Absolutely. Work. And maybe also they should, people need to understand that feminism is not exactly the extreme as they think mm -hmm. it is. Just fighting for the rights, yeah? Exactly. Yes, so FIDA is a Spanish acronym for women lawyers in Spanish. It means Federacio Internacional de Aborigas, which is Federation of Women Lawyers. Started in Mexico a while back, but in Kenya it started in 1985, straight after the third Nairobi Women's International Conference. I remember so that's when that. It started, yeah. 1985. Yes. Man, there were going to conferences in 1985. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <See your> extra. <laughs> uh, and speaking of conferences, you have a national conference later this year. Yes, we do have. Go on. We do have a women's national conference uh, that will start by having uh, conferences in the eight regions of the country. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, it will culminate in a national conference at the end of this month. Yes. Really just to consolidate women out of women's voice. Remember now, Nick and Jeff, we are just uh, shy of one year into the elections. Yeah. So we need to get women talking. We need to get Kenyans talking. And remember, women are not one size fits all. We have marginalized women, young women, uh, minority women. So we want to have the conversation going. Uh, yes, COVID has interrupted our day-to-day -day normalcy, but we cannot forget in in less than 12 months, we shall be going into an election. So we need to start the discussions now. And you have a campaign called Vote Adada. Yes. Tell us about have. that. So Vote Adada is a campaign being run by Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA Kenya, alongside other stakeholders. And we really just want to coalesce the voices of Kenyans. We want Kenyans to vet women who are going to present themselves on merit mm -hmm. and not to wish them away simply because of their gender but to interrogate their manifestos to interrogate the visions they have and we'll have a lot of quality women I can assure you from MCA level uh, to gubernatorial to MP to senatorial and we actually hope we'll have a women uh, presidential candidate because the more we have women presenting themselves women are more than half of this country it's only fair that they are also given a chance to present their manifestos devoid of violence or uh, any other issue that would stop them or bar them from running for office. What are the main things that have been stopping women in your opinion? Uh, so one, uh, as I've mentioned, violence. Okay. We have very calculated political violence that's instigated to deter women. Because at the end of the day, a woman will think twice or thrice if she knows the ground is very volatile and very violent. Secondly, campaign financing. We know campaigns are very expensive. So we need to send, set uh, the mindset right, both from the electorate and from the political party, so that they are able to sponsor uh, good candidates who are women. But thirdly, we also need our political parties, which we know are the main vehicles towards being selected, especially when you're looking at the big political parties. An election is usually more of a rubber stamp. The nomination is the main thing. If you get a, a nomination in the right area, then you're as good as, as gone through. Mm. Uh, so we need the political parties and the political owners, because in Kenya, the truth is parties are owned by individuals mm. to really commit to having women, giving women a fair chance at the nomination process and where the dispute 
courts to yes. have very fair dispute mechanisms that women who are grieved can actually go through. So we need to have fair play. I think that's what we are pushing for as FIDA. Look, and maybe this is an unfair question, but look at the lineup right now. You know, whether it's Jubilee A or B, yes. UDA, ODM, mm. OKA, there's no woman in sight. Yes. Absolutely. There's no woman. It is really sad. And I think those are the questions not just women in Kenya should be asking. Even men, remember we have sisters, you have moms, you have wives. On, be on their behalf, you have daughters. We need to question this big boys club. Where are the women? And don't give them the peripheral opportunities. Show us commitment to actually having women. And there are quality women across the board who can fill in these slots. Not one or two, but very many. So we need to see commitment. And sadly, as you've said, Jeff, the narrative right now is really uh, patriarchal. It's a boys club only. And I'm hoping even uh, the fourth estate can help to actually ask those questions. Where are the women? Would FIDA be able to, you know, uh, sponsor a few candidates just so that we can vote a data in 2022? Yes, and, and I'll define the sponsorship. So our sponsorship might not be that we give you money to run because we are not able to have that money. Remember, FIDA is 100% donor funded. Yes. However, we shall invest in their capacity building. We'll invest in preparing them even psychologically on how to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. We'll invest in the key institutions that really give them fair play. So which are these institutions? The IEBC, the Registrar of Political Parties, the Political Parties Dispute Tribunals, the Judicial Judicial Committee on Elections. So these are key institutions which if we work with ASFID alongside other stakeholders, we will guarantee and really reaffirm confidence amongst women aspirants that the structures, institutions that are mandated to ensure fair play are actually ready. And I can tell you for a good number of them, they actually are gender aware and they are ready to give women a fair play. You know, I've noticed uh, as much as you really want women to run for all these offices, yes. uh, a good number use the I'm a female, you know. Mm. So you, you I, I don't know what needs to happen mm. for that to change because you see that's not a good reason to vote for anyone. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The thing is this, uh, Nick, and we always see the challenge for us as Kenyans is we approach elections as an event. It's a process. So Kenyans will wake up on 8th or 7th of August and start vetting candidates, yet they need to start vetting them now. There are people even at MCA level within the community. You know these people. We ought to start organizing ourselves as Kenyans. You see, we wait for politicians to come to us. Why can't it be that even at the local church, if you know we have 10 candidates or at the local uh, county hall that who are offering themselves to be MCA, mobilize yourselves as a community through representatives. Have a town hall session. Ask them questions. And as you're saying, Nick, the issue that I'm an, I'm a woman, vote for me will not come across. I should have a track record. If I'm claiming to build dispensaries, have people even ever seen me in that area in the last two or three years consistently. So the challenge is as Kenyans, we wait until the last minute, start vetting candidates when it's too late. And of course what happens, people leverage on financing and on money. For as long as Kenyans will exchange their vote for 100 shillings for 50 shillings, then we lose the right to actually question the performance of our leaders. So we need to keep them engaged throughout. And you see a lot of engagement, let's say on social media, mm -hmm. women, men, you know, back and forth, back and forth, and you know, very, some outspoken women on social media mm -hmm. but qua ground totally different mm, why well how we look at it is okay let's look at social media social media is reflective of one segment of society uh, it is a good platform but remember how many Kenyans have access to social media very few However, as you say, if you go to the ground, and the ground, as you're saying, is different in the sense that they'll ask questions. If I'm going right now to where I stay and I claim that I am going to ensure that uh, the roads are made, there's a question of have you been with people? Do you engage with people? And the truth is, as we've seen, which I always encourage Kenyans, we've seen Kenyans defying odds where we have candidates who have a track record and most of them didn't have anything. There was even a candidate who only had a bicycle in some area of the country, a young man who was elected into office because the community, the ground, knew what his capacity and his potential is. So we have to keep Kenyans engaged. The problem is we remain aloof. We think politics is for politics. 
politicians, yet politics affects each and every aspect of our lives, whether it's schools, whether it's water, whether it's sanitation or roads or health. So as Kenyans, and that's a challenge we are throwing also to the citizens, let us get involved in the politics. Politics is not elections day 9th August 2022. It's your everyday life. So as you vet men, vet women, vet young people, uh, vet minorities, so for instance, you might be in a mainstream uh, tribal area, but then you have a good person who's not of that tribe. Are you ready to give them an opportunity so that we have to see the cocoons, uh, Jeff and Nick, are gender, tribal. Those are the things we need to get beyond as Kenyans. That's the only way we'll achieve change in this country. Well, how do you mobilize the youth? And mm. how do you, because, you know, obviously, <coughs> we keep saying the, it's time for the youth. It's time for the, how do you, how, you, how do you plan to do that as feeder? We've been working with young women. And young women have, their issues are very dynamic. Because most of them are still struggling with the, finding their space in the professional world. Mm -hmm. Most of them have just left school. So we engage them in terms of the issues they face. You'll find most of them are navigating uh, areas, issues around reproductive health. Many of them are young parents. Mm -hmm. An example is if you look at the femicide victims, Nick mm -hmm. and Jeff, most of them have been young women. But we've never gotten to the root cause. What happens whenever it, it takes place, the negative toxic energy in the social media on platforms is to blame the woman victim, for example. We have all these connotations, even things like, you know, we take slogans such as Kukula Fear as something simple but it's not that's part of the problem we have because there's an entitlement on one side and there's anger and bitterness on the other side so we have got to engage young women together with young men so at FIDA for example we are working with young women but at the same time we have men who we are working with who we are calling male champions because we cannot have one segment of society speaking to itself the problems we face uh, as a country affect both men and women. So if you're going to engage young women, prepare them to run for office to seek opportunity, we must also engage their counterparts who most of their time are their partners, their brothers, to prepare them also to support and to also have an environment that is conducive for young women to thrive. So that is very important. Yes, so how does one become a male champion? You know, maybe there's someone out there listening and they're like, I, I like this, <coughs> and maybe they'd like to get involved. Yes. Please uh, write to us at uh, info at feederkenya.org or even just go to our website. There'll be a link there. Just leave a message or any of our social media platforms so on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, at Feeder Kenya. Please write to us and uh, express your interest and we'll be more than glad to work you with you. You can tell us, like, generally, what would that, uh, you know, male champion do? Like, Yes. So, so our male champions are uh, our ambassadors in the community who are uh, men mm -hmm. who help flag out uh, discrimination or abuse against women who also speak towards uh, demystifying we call it toxic masculinity that thinks empowering women is competition with men or for you to empower a girl a boy somewhere has been left disenfranchised yeah. so we have got to change the narrative that you're not in competition empowering women does not mean we are leaving the boy behind yes we acknowledge there's a problem that the boy child in kenya could be facing but it's not because of empowering the girls it's because as women were speaking to the girls and empowering them the men in society probably didn't find it necessary to speak to the boy as well to prepare him why is it that um when men are campaigning they target women mostly because they know the women are the ones who are going to vote mm -hmm. And yet I come back to that question, the women won't vote for each other. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get up at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. to vote for that woman? Because you know she knows your needs mm -hmm. better than that man. Mm -hmm. What we do as women is, one, as you said, we are very dedicated. I think in a number of issues, and I know we as FIDA we haven't done a study but even in observation when you look at if it's a government drive if it's um getting health care if it's registering for huduma number often you'll find it's women who go first so what men candidates have done is of course that's an opportunity to leverage on and i do agree the challenge and that's why we started the water data initiative there's a lot of awareness that we need to do so we are not saying that simply because you're a woman you'll automatically vote for a fellow woman what 
what we're indicating and that's what FIDA and other stakeholders are doing is to empower you why it's important even as a woman to consider a woman candidate not simply because of her gender but because if she's the right candidate you stand to benefit more because the issues that she'd advocate for are close to you as a woman because she understands that. Uh, I think a few years ago they made uh maternity mm -hmm. <coughs> fees were waived in public yes. hospitals yes what other positive uh, laws mm -hmm. there's so much i'll tell you what um if you look at uh, the women who are currently in office so i'll start from the county assemblies mm -hmm. the women there have done tremendous work it's just that we never get to highlight all of it across the 47 counties okay. the women either nominated or elected have formed caucuses the caucuses have been able to push for certain key laws and especially on healthcare, mm -hmm. on access to financing for business women, on gender-based violence. A county like Makueni is now leading in having a first public gender-based violence shelter. Yes. And all this is a result of the legislative work of both women and men, but women have been champions. Do yeah. you get a lot of inspiration for when you saw President <coughs> Sulu Hassan in Nigeria, uh, next door, Tanzania? Do you get inspiration for that? Do you see, will we ever get there or is that just a one-off? We will get there, Jeff. In, a, in our lifetime? Yes, we will. Say my lifetime. You know, <laughs> that is the oldest on here. <laughs> I, I think we will. And I always say, um, uh, at times, the, I'm not overly optimistic, but we've shown we can do it. Ask me how. Communities such as in the northeastern Kenya, we have a female senator that's uh, uh, in Isiolo who was elected, not nominated. We have the first ever Ijaro MP who's a woman. So if the tide is changing there, that's on like we off, all... off the top of your head, yes. uh, <laughs> mention three females yeah. you think have presidential yeah. candidate uh, uh, quality. Martha Karua and Waiguru, Charity Ngilu. Same names from the um, last 10, 15 years. Or we might have an Annie Rary moment, you know, I don't know exactly. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, highlight for Kenyans a few mm. of the things, like I think you mentioned to me off air, about the tax waivers and products. Yes. Maybe you can list some of the ones that you've been pushing really hard for that yes. have, have come through. I think one, uh, we have been keen, uh, remember at the end of the day we are lawyers, yes. so our fidelity is really to the law. We must abide by the rule of law. Okay. Uh, I think we were very clear, even beyond the uh, the recent legislation. Remember, Jeff and Nick, as we said, we have a, we have a parliament that's unconstitutional. Mm. Chief Justice Emeritus Maraga dissolved parliament. That's the president to mm. dissolve parliament. And that was for failure to enact the two-thirds law. Uh, so FIDA has been al at, the front, at the forefront of that fight alongside other stakeholders. Where we are pushing, remember the constitution in 2010, mm. When it was promulgated, indicated that we are actually going to have a parliament that has at least a third. And there have been numerous attempts. So we have been at the forefront of that. We have been at the forefront of ensuring that when we have uh, the Sexual Offences Act, it really does hold water. So any attempts to water it down, for example, should not see the light of day. But beyond that, we are involved in very many legislative processes. So as you said, a recent example is the Finance Bill, uh, the Finance Act now uh, of 2021-2022, where we had uh, an attempt to even increase the price of baby milk supplements yes. under a certain category. We actually did write to the National Assembly Committee. We made memorandum, we submitted a memorandum, we appeared before them and really just itemized and broke down what that means. And you'll be amazed for a lot of parents at the moment, if they're to spend money on baby formula milk, you're looking at at least a thousand per week. And remember, at the end of the day, very many reasons contribute to why women are not able to naturally feed their babies. So when you look at that tweaking, and that's when even the legislators say they had not looked at it in, from that perspective. So we are involved in that, and FIDA will not stop. At the end of the day, we are agitating for a fair society, a society that holds families together. So even when there are disputes, within the family, as opposed to what people think of the perception that FIDA rushes to court. We don't do that. We do a lot of in-house mediation. We are the leading family mediation center. When the judiciary was starting quarter next mediation, they benchmarked with FIDA to see how we've been doing it. So we are keen on keeping our families together, because when you have families together, that's the only way Kenya as a society will be stronger, will be able to progress more. But as a country, isn't it shameful that if we cannot even get that two-thirds in our very own legislative house 
in Parliament. We can't mm. get two thirds. Isn't that shameful? It is. It is. I wish Parliament had actually told us here is the law. This is how we'll get numbers. Let's go to the to the polls or the ballot uh, stations and not get the numbers. But it's about commitment. And on the other hand, we know when we need certain things pushed, they are implemented within a day. If you need certain laws enacted within a short period, it actually happens. So it's really a question of the political will and what Kenyans need to realize. Yes, today the women organizations or the women in Kenya might feel slighted. It's about two thirds. Tomorrow it will be something totally different. You know, there are a lot of people who say, you know, feed is just about the girl child. How with the boy child? What do you tell them? We are still working with the boy child. We partner with a lot of organizations who work with boys but here is a challenge and I always use uh, this example that as FIDA we are women lawyers we focused on the girl because it's very easy to speak to girls you are once girls uh, Jeff as you said when I look at the lineup of all the top front runners mm. they are all men that's mm. the one thing they have in common yeah. so I'm very keen and I'm really hoping and I'm appealing to even the Kenyan men as these gentlemen come to sell their manifesto with their billions, can you please question them properly? What is their plan for the Kenyan boy child? Because that's where we have a problem. So, and they are men, they need to, they are role models to a number of young men. So really they need to be questioned on that parameter. As a presidential candidate, what is your plan for the Kenyan boy child? Of course, in addition to the Kenyan girl child. And next time you tell me that you have Umama, <laughs> you take me to feed <laughs> for mediation. <laughs> the campaign again is called Vote Adada 2022, right? Yes. Vote Adada. 2021, then we're going to 2020. Then we're going to 2020. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you call voter data, obviously, uh, it will be pushed mostly on social media. I may have like a big, wide, okay, there's also radio. Yes. But the main vote, as you said, in Mashinani. What are yes. the plans? Oh, we'll go to Mashinani. Mm -hmm. We are already there. Mm -hmm. We work with almost uh, uh, over slightly over 40 community-based organizations, not just women-led, even men-led. Mm -hmm. And so we are really trying and seeing how to cascade this conversation and we already are doing that Kenya uh, Kenya is wide and yes FIDA has three main offices but I can tell you we are across the country so we are working in Wajia, in Marsabit in Bungoma, in Busia in Tana River, in Kuala so we are really, for, for the kind of institution we are who would never even get a single shilling, imagine all these years from the exchequer we fundraise internationally and locally we try our best but we also need the government of Kenya to come in and help where we are not able to reach. You have to tell us your journey to the top, you know, the, how it started, <laughs> yeah. the passion yeah. until you got there. Because I think also a lot mm. of women need to hear that directly from you. Yes. Because yeah, you're the executive director now, yeah? Yes. For only two years. Yes, yeah. yes. And you could have worked anywhere else in the last 15. Yes. So <laughs> tell us how it started I, um, until you got to the top. Okay, so I, when I finished law school, I was working, I was chambering, because you have to do the chambering before you go to the Kenya School of Law to become an advocate. Okay. And uh, interesting, then out of choice, I wanted to work for women law firms or women-led law firms. And my bosses then who are celebrated senior legal counsel in this country, women, because mm -hmm. uh, we have very few women senior counsel, but they hire part of them. I really encourage me that uh, there's a flip side to this. Yes, you're running big files, big corporate work, but just take time to also do some volunteerism. And so the first organization that came to mind was FIDA. And so I applied to be an intern. Uh, that was, I think, um, in... Um, 2005, so yeah, people can do the math about my age. Yeah, you're 24. <laughs> um, <that> exactly, <laughs> you see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and I remember, I always say it because it's, it's, it's a memory that vividly sticks in my, to, in my mind to date, and I was there as a young legal intern attending to the women who come to FIDA, and there was a girl who was literally my age then, and she had come in with a very bad case of domestic violence, and her partner had really injured her and cut her deep, and so so 
we were busy hell running helter skelter trying to get medical and she was actually bleeding getting medical attention preparing the file the court file to go to court the next day for assault and so the next day she actually came and told me you know what and um we need to drop this case I've forgiven my partner the parents came home we did everything and I was like really um I didn't want to judge her then for dropping the case but it was more of the empowerment level that there's more when when you work with women and the young women especially for them to appreciate that as I, i mean breaking out or not staying in a relationship that's not working that doesn't mean you're a failure and if someone maims you today tomorrow they're going to finish you and so that thing that level of disempowerment and that i was only empowered because i had the opportunity to be exposed my parents took me to school i was raised with really no difference between me and my brothers in terms of our responsibility really made me appreciate that so i never looked back and so when i was admitted to the bar i actually had some job offers in the corporate sector but fida also gave me an opportunity and those no second guessing my decision and since then i've never looked back yeah yeah it's a passion i enjoy it does take it, it gets quite heavy it gets quite uh, uh consumes your every part in terms of your psychological uh well being because you can imagine we listen you know at times we tell kenyans which is sad you might have that one kiss jeff on social media that really acts you and you're like no this has to stop for people at fida that's a daily occurrence in a day you might see up to 20 clients before covid we used to see in all our three offices nairobi mombasa kisumu a combination of up to 100 women a day yes so i for me it's just not for me as and it's just to really celebrate my staff at fida and our partners because it takes it takes courage to work for fida it takes a lot of determination and resolve because hardly are you ever celebrated but the work that those amazing people the young men and women and staff of fida do is really just tremendous and i celebrate them i walk around as a ceo yes people will say fida has done so well but it's really because of those who are there now and even those who were there before that they sacrifice their lives to be able to do that service 